Hi everyone, how are you guys doing? Good. I'm good, how are you professor? Thank you, I'm okay. Okay, so we should start. <coughs> uh, do you guys know that next week uh, there's no class? Spring break next week? Spring break, right? Yeah. You guys know that? Yeah. Yeah, it's spring break. It's going to be fun. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Spring break, stay home. <laughs> Don't go party. On the beach. No Florida party. Spring break party. Professor, is there a way you can tilt the camera a little down? Oh, oh my God, I, I messed up. I messed up. You're probably looking at the ceiling, looking at the ceiling of my house. No, it was just oh. half of the board, but it, it's good now. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I just <coughs> forgot to check it. No, you're good. Yeah, I forgot to check it. Uh, section 5.1. So we did an example last time, okay? So in general, the situation looked like this. So M is the mass, K is spring constant. It's just essentially somewhat re, I mean, re, <coughs> recapture the example last time. <coughs> okay. Uh, if you look back at the example, you can see that this guy is called omega square. Okay. In other words, omega. So when you have that, <coughs> you have x double prime. Is that omega referring to angular velocity? Yes, or yes, yes. It is, right? Yeah, yeah, it's angular velocity. <coughs> because you look like this. <coughs> so you have m squared plus omega squared equal to zero. This is characteristic equation. Okay, so M will be plus or minus omega i. Okay. In the second part, are you referring to the angular acceleration? Or since you're taking the second derivative? If you take the derivative. So, okay, so hold on one second. So x will be, x will be uh, C1 cosine omega t plus t2 sine omega t, which can be written as some amplitude sine omega t plus some phase shift. Uh, we went through this, but with some numbers, okay? Last time, and now it's just a little bit, little bit more general, okay? Uh, so you can see this, this is a sinusoid. So 
Uh, maybe I just uh, also try to <coughs> show you the relationship between A and C1, C2. And then tangent phi. Tangent phi is probably equal to one. Um, C1 over C2. Okay, that means phi is going to be tangent inverse of C1 over C2. Or tangent inverse C1 over C2. That's fine. We talked about that last time. Okay, <laughs> from this you can see omega is. Uh, um, in t, as I say, t is in second, right? So as t increased by one, okay, this guy increased by omega. So omega is actually the angular speed. Or angular, sometimes they call it speed, sometimes they call it frequency, it's a little bit confusing. But basically, this is how fast this is running how fast this sinusoid is moving, okay? So this one, this angular frequency or angular speed, this is in, what well, the unit is gonna be in radian per unit time. Let's say radian per second, okay? Uh, I'm gonna do unit time, then. okay? Radian per unit time. So it's gonna go so many radian per unit time. So how does how long does it take to do one cycle? So the period, okay, the period is gonna be two pi over omega, and that will be the period. Uh, this is you've probably seen this in physics quite a bit already. Did you guys see this in physics? Yeah. It's terminology. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, does that say radians over what time? Uh, unit time. Uh, unit time. I mean, you can use that. Maybe the second then. Okay. I'll just use the standard <coughs> uh, international unit, radian per second. Okay. okay. So two pi over omega will be in second will be the period. So this is kind of capturing what we did last time. Any question? Uh, if you don't have questions, I'm going to continue. Okay. Now a, is A the amplitude here? Is that what you're referring to? C. A is the amplitude, yeah. <laughs> a is the amplitude. <laughs> So basically the graph look like this. Okay, X is the displacement. So the graph look like depends on where you start, okay? Depends on the initial condition and all kinds of things like that. Something, maybe something like this. Sir, what is T? T is time. T the is time. big T? Huh? The big T is time? Oh, big T is period. Big T is period. Uh, period is like from here to here. So this is one, one period. How long for the sinusoid to go one period? Does it kind of make sense, Sylvia? No? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. I, I just didn't, like, I was confused about what the period was. Yeah, I, did. I wrote the period over the other time. Yeah. Yeah, this is one period here. Okay, uh, because in one period, one period the angle has to go, in one period the angle has to go two pi, okay? But the angular speed, the angular speed is actually omega. So how long does it take to wrap around one period? It's two pi divided by, by this side. Any other questions?
Any other questions, guys? Uh, no, right now. Okay. We're good. We're good. Good. Oh, I'm good, I should say. Okay. So I'm going to talk about another case where instead of just the spring, uh, just free uh, with the the, the, the next one is has another term here, okay? So I'm gonna talk about that now, okay? So the picture will look like this in this case. Uh, you have this support here, you have this guy, you have this mask. You should think about this. One way to think about it uh, is this guy is in some kind of maybe liquid. Or this can just be a dashboard. A dashboard is like some those things. So this is basically they used to make the shock, right? In the car. So this guy is basically when it moves, he has a damping motion. Do you yeah. guys know what a dashboard is? That part is roughly look like this. I mean, you have this guy. Uh, you have this thing inside, and you just move. You move this thing up and down, but there's some friction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here, in addition to the spring trying to pull the thing back, there's another term. Okay. So it's m t square x d t square equal to minus kx minus beta dx dt. Now, this beta, <laughs> this is called the damping constant. This comes some kind of resistance. This beta <laughs> is the proportionality constant, the, co the force the resistance is proportional to the speed, okay? Proportional to the first derivative. The faster this is trying to move, the more resistance you have. So the equation actually look like this, okay? Yeah, any question about the model? So now we introduce one extra term, okay? It's not simple harmonic motion anymore. There is resistance. Can you repeat that one more time? Uh, this the, the, the whole resistance point. So this term here, this term here, is the resistance of the dashboard. Okay. Right. So that force is proportional to the speed, the force that you have pulling mm -hmm. back, opposing the motion. It's the force opposing the motion. Right. Okay. It's proportional to the speed. Kind of like <laughs> it's resistant. It's like even when you uh, it's similar to air resistance, but in in this case, it's a lot bigger than air resistance because you're putting it in some liquid or that form. Wait, so for um, beta, that is that like in a physical model that represents like when a spring, it like. Re it keeps going like down. Is that what that represents? No, it's not. The, it's this one has <coughs> in a physical model. <coughs> um, do you uh, have you experienced things like a uh, the uh, shock, the shock of a car, the shock, like some, some of, not all of them, but some. some okay, the, some cars, some cars. Um, my car have a shock when they raise the hood. That hood will come down very slowly. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, some doors use it as well. Yeah, some doors use it. Yeah. Or the shock inside your car on the wheel, okay, next to the wheels. Yeah. Okay, because when the car suddenly bounces, it doesn't want it to keep bouncing, 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 right? It doesn't want it to have a undamped motion, like it keeps bouncing forever. That's terrible. <laughs> Once it runs through a bump, if you don't have a shock, it just bounces for a long time, okay? And that's not good. Yeah, that's that's what I'm asking. What is that what beta represents? Yeah, yes. It's that. 
but not the not the not the term due to the Hobbes law. Okay, not the spring itself. It's the yes. it's this other gadget. Okay, the, this kx is because of the spring itself. This term is because of you put it in some liquid. You can think of it like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So those are the kind of two separate things. The k x this term is this term the spring is because of Hooke's law is proportional to the displacement, and this other restoring force is proportional to the speed. Is it better, hopefully, guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks for asking, Sylvia. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to just solve this. We're going to solve this thing in general first, okay? I mean, you can put some numbers in it, but solution is similar, okay? We're going to try to solve this in general. So uh, we're going to move all the term to the other side. Okay, then divide by m. Now remember this one. This one we call this omega square. And this constant beta over m, we'll use another name, okay? I mean, this, I'm just, I mean, different book use different terminology or the different notations. Uh, we, our book call this two times lambda. You can just call it lambda if you like, but then everything, if you call it two lambda, things come out nicer, a little bit nicer. Okay, it's just a definition. So lambda is beta over m divided by two. Okay. So now my equation look like this. My equation look like d square x dt square plus two lambda dx dt plus omega square x equals zero. <laughs> now remember lambda is lambda is two lambda is this guy, omega square is this guy. Okay. So if you want to be very explicit, lambda is equal to beta over two m. Omega is equal to square root of k. Okay. I mean, you can do the whole thing with just all this beta m and k. It just things doesn't come out as nicely. Just a little bit more difficult to see. That's all. Okay. <laughs> so the characteristic equation is going to look like what? M square plus Two lambda m is omega squared equal to zero. It's okay. <laughs> uh, are you guys still okay up to here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the rules of this equation. We are going to use um, quadratic formula. Minus b plus or minus square root b square minus four ac all over two. Which is equal to minus lambda plus or minus square root lambda square. Uh, maybe now you can see why <laughs> we have this as two lambda. Then things cancel out nicely because I can take the four out now. Square root four become two and then cancel. Uh, are we okay up to here? So we have two roots now. Okay, we have two roots. Any questions so far? Is lambda beta over two m? 
on the right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So we have different situations depending on depending on whether <coughs> what happened to this guy. Okay. Really depends on what happened to that guy. Uh, so we have different cases. Lambda square minus omega square becoming zero. Okay. In this case, in this case, you are going to have is the root real or complex? Complex, right? It's definitely not real. No, this guy bigger than zero. Is it real or complex? That one's going to be real. That is because be there's no i. Oh. Okay. Why? Because you get the experiment. Okay. So in this particular case. Okay, uh, we will end up with the answer is going to be look like this x of t c1 uh, e to the power the first root which is the first root is lambda minus <coughs> sorry Is it okay? Are uh, we okay? Do you guys understand how we can end up with this? Because the two roots are one of these are the two roots, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So uh Let's study this slightly more. This will look like, uh, I can take the e to the negative lambda t out. I mean, this is, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Uh, maybe I don't do that step. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just leave it like this, okay? I'm gonna just leave it like this. Professor? Yes. I understand everything you're doing, but I'm a little confused. What are we what are we after? Or what are we looking for? Or what, what is it we're looking for? Position or uh, we're looking for position. We're trying to solve for XT. So we're looking for position. Solving the differential equation. Got it. And get the XT. I got it. Thank you. Okay. We just we are trying to take a look at a little bit more at how this guy is going to look like. Okay. Mm -hmm how this solution is going to look like. Got it. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to try to convince you that, is this one a negative number? Are you convinced that it's a negative number? Yeah, it's gotta be, because... Um, lambda, lambda is positive, by the way, okay? Here, this guy is positive, right? Because beta is positive and m is positive. Yeah. This guy is always a positive stuff. So. Okay. Yeah. So if we're multiplying a negative number by that, then it, if you're if we're multiplying a positive number by a negative by, by negative one, and then you're subtracting uh, something that looks positive, then yeah, I don't know. Minus it should be negative. This, this is negative, and this is negative. Negative plus negative is negative. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna to try to convince the even this one is also negative. Obviously, this is one is negative. This one is also negative. Are you convinced this is also negative? 
uh, because <coughs> this one is negative lambda. So now this part is positive, right? This part is positive. But it's not as positive as this one is as negative because this is subtract omega square. Can you guys see that? Yes, no? Isn't that what you have on the right as well? Okay, if you're not, let me try to convince you that thing is negative then, okay? The reason this one is negative is because uh, lambda square is bigger than lambda square minus omega square. This one is obviously true. Yeah. Take the square root, okay? Take the square root on both sides, positive square root. So this guy is bigger than this guy, okay? So if you put this to the other side, subtract lambda on both sides, zero will be bigger than this guy. Minus lambda. It's okay? I try to convince you with those blue color stuff. So this guy is also negative. Are you guys somewhat convinced? You can plug some number, you can see easily. I mean, if they say- Yeah, we're good. Other people, I mean, because this guy here, this is lambda square, you subtract some stuff, right? Lambda square taking square root. If lambda square taking square root will be the same as lambda, but you subtract this, it's going to be smaller. This positive number is not as negative as negative number, which is, if you write out with this. Okay. So both of these are negative. So what is the limit <coughs> of xt as t goes to infinity? Is it zero? It will be zero. That means it does not bounce forever. Okay, Jose, we are trying to, we, we solve this. We now have the solution for this, the displacement x. Okay, mm -hmm. we try to take a look at what is really, how the shape of the graph look like. Okay, and we now conclude that it's not gonna keep bouncing forever. Okay. Um, it's eventually it goes to zero, basically. Unlike the first one, you remember the simple harmonic motion? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so I'm going to just draw some, I'm going to erase most of this now. <laughs> so, it eventually died down. Okay, you went to the die down. Let's see, start over with somewhere here. You went to the die down. I mean, can it be like this? It actually is not like this. It doesn't go like this. I'm going to have to convince you why that's not the case. Okay, so what I am going to do is to, uh, so there are some properties here. Uh, xt equal to zero. Uh, xt equal to zero. xt equal to zero is the x-intercept. Okay, these are all x-intercept. You guys know what I'm talking about? Of course, only once. Not only once. Of course, and most once. Okay, if I can establish this, then this curve, then this curve is not going to be keep bouncing back and forth above and below the x axis. It's going to be probably it will be something like this. It can potentially go like this and then die down. It's one possibility. 
you can go maybe just go like this and die down. Okay. Or you can go maybe this is this is occur this is crossing x-axis once. This is does not cross x-axis. Or you can all go down here and then go this is crossing one. So these are different possibilities. Okay. It really depends on how, you, let's say you release it from this position, right? The blue, the blue curve, the blue curve, you push it up, you push it, uh, not up. In this case, it's, uh, remember the, the, our model is that this is increasing X. This is increasing X. So when this guy, when this, this blue line, this is going up, the curve go up means that this is going down. Is it okay? When you're pushing this down, you release it from here, a certain position, you push it down with certain velocity, eventually it's going to bounce back. Okay, when it bounces back, it may cross the equilibrium, it may cause the equilibrium position and go all the way down. But after that, it's not going to do this anymore. It's not going to go back up again. Okay. It's okay. So, you guys understand what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. So this is what you want for a shock. Mm -hmm. Okay. No matter what happened, it just doesn't really keep bouncing you around. You eventually settle down. Now, <coughs> symbolically, we're going to try to solve this. Try to solve this. X T equal to zero occur at close ones. That means you cannot just keep jumping around, jumping around. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so how do we show this? What does x equal to zero mean? We put x, we put this left hand side equal to zero and solve for t, right? Mm -hmm. Are you guys with me? Yeah. So set x, set x equal to zero and solve for t. And when we do that, we're going to show that it cannot have more than one solution. So we say zero is equal to uh, zero is equal to um, this guy. Okay, and then we are trying to solve for t. Okay, are we still okay? And then we solve, solve for t. I'm gonna wait until you guys are kind of more ready. Are you guys ready? Let me know if you're ready. One sec. Are you guys kind of good now? You're good. Yeah. Now I'm going to get rid of this because this is going to be a common factor. <laughs> I take the e to the power minus lambda t out because the left hand side is here. Is it okay? Yes? Wait, why are yeah. we factoring out negative lambda? I just want to solve for t here. I'm trying to solve for t, guys. I factor that out. I simplify the thing. Become a little bit simpler. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. 
Can you guys see that I can take the e to the power minus lambda t out? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You basically, I, I multiply both sides by e to the power lambda t. Then those terms will be gone. Okay, I see, I see. Got it. Okay. So what I end up with is that negative c1, uh, maybe it's a bit negative. So c1 e to the power of this guy. It's a negative C2. It's a negative. Okay. So um, move to move this guy to this side, move this guy to the other side. Okay. Then e to the power two times this equal to negative c two over c one. Okay. And then I have how do I isolate t, guys? How do I isolate t? Take the natural log of both. L and both sides, so two to the power of this guy. T equal to Ln negative C2 over C1. T will be equal to T equal to Ln negative C2 over C1 divided by 2. Okay. <coughs> uh, this answer you can have, depends on whether this guy here is positive or not, is in the domain of the LN function. If that one falls outside the domain of the LN function, then it will have, you will have no solution. Otherwise, you will have one solution. Is it okay? So can we you know, say that one more time? What? The Ln function, the domain of the Ln function, yeah, zero to infinity. Mm -hmm. So it depends on this guy. Oh, I, I see. So if this guy is bigger than zero, yeah. I got it. then you have one solution. Otherwise, you have zero. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Any questions so far? Uh, I'm going to write down the second property, but not going to go through the time, spend the time on proving it. X prime t equal to zero occurs at most one. Okay. X prime t is going to be local maximum and local minimum. Uh, this basically saying that this blue curve is not allowed. This blue curve I draw, this blue curve I draw has two local max and mean. So that blue curve is actually will not happen. <coughs> okay. So either look like this. Okay. You push it in this direction and then settle down or push it down all the way down and then settle down like this. Or you push it in this direction Okay, but you didn't push it all the way through and it just settled down like that. Okay, so those are the possibilities. Okay, so how do I figure this out? You basically differentiate your solution xt, okay, and then set x prime t equal to zero and solve for t. I already have my solution here. You take the derivative and then you set it to zero and solve for t. But I'm not going to go through that. It's similar to what we have done. It's just a little bit more messy because of the derivative. It can be done both ways, right? Huh? It can be done both ways, right? It's the same thing. Right? I mean, this is a, 
if you want to show that it has at most one local maximum minimum, right. you have to look at the, the velocity. Mm -hmm. The velocity is at most zero ones. Mm -hmm. The first one is that it crosses the equilibrium position at most ones. Mm -hmm. This one is cross equilibrium position. And this one is velocity it's zero. Okay? Velocity zero, that means you have a local maximum. So this kind of case is the one that you want to, it's really what happened with a shock. Okay, this case is called over them. Case one is over there. Okay. It's when lambda square minus omega square bigger than zero. Uh, are you guys having a difficult time because we uh, just keep doing this with symbols? Or are you guys okay? I'm going to assume you're okay then. Just think of that. So, so, so someone said no, they're, they're not okay with yes. it. Yeah, someone, not. yeah. Someone doesn't get it. Okay. So in that case, we should do an example. Sorry, Professor Sean, can you move the book a little bit um, so I can oh, read the word? Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's all right, thank you. Okay, why don't I do, in that case, we will do an example about this, okay? We're going to do an example for this case, okay? Uh, can I start to erase stuff? Yes. Yeah, yeah. we're good. Thank you. Is it true that some of you don't have a speaker and then you have to just type into the chat? Is that what happened? That sometimes you cannot respond to me? Uh, I think everybody has a microphone or maybe or some people are, oh, saying, people are yes. saying yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so in this case, in this case, uh, in this particular example, okay, this guy is. So, it, which example is that on the book? This is k over m. This guy is two lambda, which is beta over m. Okay. And then we're going to just solve it, okay? Uh, there's an initial condition there.
Do you understand the significance of this? Originally, the displacement is one unit below the equilibrium position. Okay. And when you release it, <coughs> when you release it, you, uh, you force it. When you release it, you push it so that it has a velocity of one downwards. Is it okay? Is it all right with this interpretation here for the initial condition? Let me know whether you understand that physically. Can you explain it one more time, please? Okay. So this is increasing x. Okay. Mm -hmm. Downward is a positive direction. Yeah. X prime zero equal to one. Sorry, x zero equal to one. Zero is time. Yeah. When time is equal to zero initially. When it hasn't been released. When it hasn't been released. Yeah. Initially, yeah. you you have pull it down by one unit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You pull it down from the equilibrium position by one unit. Yeah. You haven't even released it yet. Yes. Okay. That's time zero. Mm -hmm. Now, when you release it, you have choice. You can just let go. You can push it up. If you just let go, then this one will be zero because the initial velocity is zero. But you can push it down or push it up. I got it. Is, is it okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so this is saying pushing it down with a velocity of one. Got it. And the beta, which is the damping constant, and the K, which is a spring constant, and the mass is such that you get five and four here. Okay? So do you know how to solve this guy? M squared plus five M plus four equal to zero. M will be, it doesn't work. Does it? Uh, it works. Can you factorize it? Yeah. You don't have to use quadratic formula. That's four and one. No, maybe two and three. Um, I, I don't know. Never mind. It's one and four. It's fine. Four and one. Four and one. Two and three is not going to get you five and four. <coughs> These are real numbers. It corresponds to this case where these are actually real numbers, not positive numbers. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So the solution is going to be xt equal to d1 e to the power minus t plus c2 e to the power minus 4t. So this is a this is because it's really disguised. It's just that there is so much symbol you get scared and confused. It's really just this. Can you see that as time goes to infinity, this guy will go to zero? Can you see that? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Infinity zero, yeah. Let's determine C1 and C2. Okay. Let's determine C1 and C2 then. Okay. How do we do that? We use the initial condition. Okay, so one will be put in there, x0 equal to one, one is equal to c1 plus c2. Okay, this corresponds to x0 equal to one. Okay, give me this. This, this. Now you take the derivative of this, so use the second condition. Okay, you guys help me to differentiate this. Minus C1 E to the negative T minus four C2 E to the minus four T. Yeah, thank you, Sylvia. Okay, and then you plug the, 
x times zero to the one. One is equal to minus c one minus four c two. Now you have these two equations, right? Equation one and equation two. Can you solve c one and c two? One plus two. We cancel out the c one. Will be two equal to negative three c two. Is it okay? Can you guys see that? Uh, let me know if I make a mistake. So c two is going to be negative two over three. If c two is negative two over three, c one should be equal to one minus c two. One plus two over three. We will five over three. Is it okay? Are you guys good? Yeah. So my xt my xt is actually equal to now let me know if I make a mistake. I'm not looking at the at the knocks of the book, okay? Um, five over three. E to the power minus t minus two over three minus four t. Okay. Then I'm going to try to figure out. Okay. Uh, when is x t equal to zero? Okay. Let's try to figure it out. How to do that? Oh, I'm sorry, I erased it. Can I erase? No, 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 wait, wait. So zero is equal to this. Okay. So five e to the power minus t is equal to two e to the power minus four t. But you're good, you can erase it if you want. Put all the t to one side. e to the power three <coughs> t. Okay. Can someone tell me whether you can find an answer for that? Is, do I do it right? I think so, right? Yeah. So what happened here? A negative number. It's a negative number? Yeah. So this guy, because this one is less than one, so this is negative. negative. So it doesn't really cross zero. Okay? Because you get a negative number. You cross zero before time equal to zero. Okay? So what happened is that the graph is going to look like this. Okay? Uh, this is x. Okay. Um, at the beginning, x0 is equal to 1. 0 equal to 1. x prime 0 equal to 1. Okay. x prime 0 is equal to 1, you are actually pushing it out. Okay. 
and then it's going to drop back down, but it will never cross this. And as it goes to infinity, it goes to zero. So it looks like this, guys. Is it okay? Are you guys okay? Yeah, that was good. Okay, we're gonna ask one more thing here. When is the velocity zero? Oh, Professor, other question. Yeah. Uh, so if T is negative, why does it not cross the line? It will cross it, but it's not, you are not interested in that. That is, you haven't even physically done anything. It's something here. Your experiment start at T equal to zero. That's prehistoric time. That doesn't have physical meaning, right? So it crosses the line when X was negative? Yeah, when t is negative. It's oh, just an extrapolation, no? Huh? It's just like a, a reverse extrapolation, no? Yeah, it's it's an extrapolation. You can extrapolate to negative time, then it will cross it here. But since we don't really, are we able to like calculate what the values would actually be? So that I mean, yeah, it's probably it's not always going to be like value. a linear line. It's no? this value. It's this value. But well, what I'm saying is that. That dotted blue line might not always be negative. Um, linear, no. Huh? It, it's said, not. It, it does. I mean, I'm just drawing it something. Oh, okay. Probably curve a little bit. Probably curve okay. Like okay, never mind. Okay, but we're not interested in that. Got it. Thank you. Okay. When is the velocity equal to zero? Just take the derivative of this thing and then set it to zero. Is it okay? You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So x prime t is equal to minus pi over three or minus t plus a over three minus Set this guy to zero will be zero equal to minus five to the power minus t plus eight minus four t. Five e to the power minus t equal to eight e to the power minus four t e to the power three t equal to eight over five <coughs> three t. 3t equal to ln 8 over 5, t equal to 1 third ln 8 over 5. And this one will be positive. Okay, it's defined and positive. Okay. So it corresponds to here. Okay. So this is my time. Yeah, it's one third L and eight over five. How are we doing? Fair question. I, I didn't hear exactly what you said. Is that eight fifths, a uh, natural log of eight fifths? Uh, yeah, Antonio, sorry. I just stepped over oh. to order. So you were saying that you were asking about this? Yes. Ln of eight over five. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to read. It's a little bit fuzzy. The Ln curve, look like, what, say it again? No, I'm just saying the, the camera's a little fuzzy. That's why it's going to hurt to make up this. Yeah, sometimes thing. I think it's the internet. Oh, okay. Is it fuzzy for everybody? Might just be me, maybe. No, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see. Is it my problem? Is it my internet connection or is this individual student's internet connection? 
I think it's but... just doing it like online. Is that's just gonna happen? But mm. it, it gets fuzzy like sometimes. It'll just get pixelated. Might be also that Zoom is like overloaded right now because everybody's using it, like countrywide or whatever. I see. So most it's of clear your... most of the time. Hmm. It's pretty clear most of the time. Yeah, it's For clear. Just like the the smaller numbers, like it, you can kind yeah. of look if you look really close. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're good. It's good. So the the ln function look like this. Ln function. This is ln x. Okay. So this is the point one zero. So if the input to the ln function is bigger than one, you're going to get a positive number. Otherwise, you get a negative number. If the input is actually negative, it's not even defined. Okay. I think we are kind of good on this now. Is it right? Are we good? Yeah. We're doing case two. <laughs> okay, we just finished case one. There are three cases. And after that, we also have to put the right-hand side, we have to do something on the right-hand side because currently the right-hand side is zero. So this section is really long, okay? For this entire chapter, I'm only going to do 5.1. Okay, but 5.1 is long. Okay. I'm going to erase most of this, okay? Is anybody else recording the lecture today? Or is it not recording? I'm not. I know the hands is. Uh, um, so okay, perfect. Okay. Doing a good job. I just didn't see the little the recording thing like last time. But maybe it doesn't show. I actually rewatch. I watched uh, Tuesdays and I watched Tuesday and Thursdays lecture. Mm -hmm. so I know that I know that um, when my computer ran out of power, some of you thought that I got dragged away to quarantine. <laughs> 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 I mean, you're you're coughing, you're coughing a little bit. So, but I didn't know that, right? Because I my computer was done. So when I when I rewatch it, when I rewatch it, then it's recording one. It's recording everything. So I, I think it really became a teacher. It was really funny. Yeah. I think some one of you say that he must get dragged away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jana became the professor. Huh? No, I said that Jana became the professor. Oh yeah, Jana was the host. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I don't know how it works because probably you were the last one to talk or something. <laughs> probably. I think it's Antonio who said that. Oh, he got dragged away to to uh, okay. quarantine. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I know that some people were trying to sell toilet paper while that was gone. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, somebody was mentioning toilet paper. So he's selling toilet paper or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. This is a case for critically them. So this is in between the two, in between case one and case three. Case three is going to be, you know, case three is going to be this guy less than zero, right? So now this is exactly equal to zero. When this is exactly equal to zero, you will have what? <coughs> your answer in this case, uh, your M is what? Minus lambda plus or minus this, right? Lambda squared by this guy over. Over two? No, not over two. Already take out the two. Right? But when this guy is equal to zero, when this guy is equal to zero, this part is equal to zero. Then your m will be minus lambda and minus lambda. Is that right? You guys know what I'm talking about? 
Yes. No. Uh, I think so. Looking why? Up. Why is it two minus yeah. lambdas? Why not just one? Because they are minus lambda plus or minus zero. So you have double root. Gotcha. It's not oh, okay. Okay. It's okay. Multiplicity. Yeah. yeah. Okay, twice. So x t will be c one e to the power minus lambda t plus c two. Hey, what do I write here? You guys are good at this. T e to the minus lambda t. Very good. It's okay. This case is very similar to the first case, okay? It's not extremely interesting. Uh, I mean, it's not that much different from, <coughs> from the other case. What do you think this is? What do you think this is? As t equal to infinity. Did you say something, Jaina? Yes, but I'm not sure about it. What did you say? I said zero. Oh yeah, okay, so I, this guy is certainly zero, the first one. Okay. The second one is also zero intuitively. Intuitively, <coughs> this guy is linear. <coughs> Going up in it, going to infinity. This guy go to infinity, right? As linear. This guy go to zero, but exponential. Exponential always win, right? Compared with linear. So make it more formal. Lemma t minus lambda t equal to infinity. This will be infinity times zero. <coughs> because it's infinity times zero, it's indeterminate form. You will rewrite it like this. Okay. Rewrite it like this. And now it's what? Infinity over infinity. And now we can use what rule? Lobby tau. Lobby tau rule. So lemon t equal to infinity. You prime each of this, right? You d okay. I'm going to just write one over lambda. Do you guys know what I did? I differentiate top and bottom. Okay, t go to infinity. The bottom part go to infinity. One over infinity. Is it? Okay. So the behavior of the graph is very similar. Okay, it's very much similar. Wait. So are those limits? like the limit of x of t equals zero on the left side and then also equals zero, are those two separate limits? Or are you just proving that the whole thing goes to zero? I'm proving this goes to zero, but in order to prove it. Oh, oh so, okay, so, so the right-hand side's the proof. In order to prove this part equal to zero, I was trying to formally do it for you. Okay. But you can just use my intuition if you want. I mean, because this is one step of like a really, really big problem. Okay. What was the Hoppedals rule again? Huh? What was that rule again? Like, I kind of forgot. The what rule is that if you have <coughs> indeterminate form zero over zero, infinity over infinity, then limit. The derivative is right. T, 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 uh, sorry, F, X, the X will be a lemma. X go to A, F prime X, T prime X, okay? That's log it over, okay? All right, thank you. Uh, the graph of this guy is very similar. Okay, so you can show that, you can also show that, for example, this property here, uh, xt equal to zero occurs 
at most once, I think. Okay, why don't we just try that? Okay, we have just like a several minutes. Don't want to start the third case yet. <coughs> until, until on Thursday. So set it to zero. So we see one e to the power minus lambda t, but c two t e to the power minus lambda t. So t will be equal to what? This this common factor, right? e to the power minus lambda t. So we see one plus c two t equal to zero. T will be minus c two minus c one over c two. Okay. Depending on c one and c two, this t may or may not make sense, but they occur only once. So the graph is very similar to what we had before. Okay. For the first case. So can we go to the third case uh, next time or do we need an example with numbers? I think this one is probably simple enough can we get away with not doing an example with numbers? Is this rule going to be in the exam? Huh? Is this rule going to be in the exam? If it is, we should do an exam, maybe. Uh, not in the upcoming. Uh, okay, it is. Sorry, sorry. This okay. So we'll do example next time. If you don't mind, it's maybe it's. Do do you, how about you could just tell us that. Why, why do I One of the examples on the book, okay, you just let me go over it. I'll do it now. Okay. Why don't I just do it now? Sorry. Isn't this uh, just like the last example that we did, but it's, it's like less exactly. steps, right? Yeah, that's true. Also, yeah, you're right. It's going to be really exactly the same thing. Uh, okay. I can just do it then. I'll just do it before we go, okay? Okay, so we have something like this. So this is a case with critically then because it m squared plus eight m plus sixteen equal to zero will be m plus four squared equal to zero, m equal to minus four minus four. So x t will be c one e to the power minus four t plus c two t e to the power minus four t. Okay, and you can. If you want, you can have some kind of initial condition. Uh, the one, the book has x zero equal to zero, x prime zero equal to negative three. Now, what does that mean? That means you're releasing it from the equilibrium position, but you actually push it outwards with a velocity three, okay? So you can solve for C1 and C2. So zero is going to be C1 plus C2. X prime T here is going to be minus C1 uh, plus C2. And here you have to do what? <coughs> you have to do chain rule. Okay, and then you put uh, this this one come from x zero equal to zero. Okay, the other one come from x prime zero equal to negative three. So negative three equal to negative three equal to minus four c one. Uh, put the zero here plus c two. Okay, and then you solve. For C1 and C2. Okay, I'm going to just say solve for C1 and C2, okay? 
Because we're running out. Yeah, we're good. And then put it back. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so we are going to do case three next time, okay? Uh, on Thursday. Okay. Uh, any questions before we sign off? Are you guys good? Okay, stay safe, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you professor. You. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.